Right, let's 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 talk about somebody. I think I think we've got to talk about um, Stephen Yaxley, Tommy Robinson Lennon, um, former founder of the EDL, which is he's contractual. It's an obligation that you have to say all those things when you talk about Tommy Robinson. There he is, wearing a T-shirt that says "Convicted of Journalism." Oh, thank you very much. Now I'll I'll certainly take a look at the cycling jersey for you. Um, convicted of journalism. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, he was sentenced today. Um, <laughs> sentenced. There we go. Um, to nine months. Nine months in prison. Basically, to do 19 weeks in prison, he'll do half of that. Um, they said that his, his Facebook Live video that he did outside the court was contempt of court and it encouraged vigilante action. Um, now this this is this is a sticky one, really. I I'm not what what you'd call a massive supporter of Tommy Robinson, um, to say the least. But I think they've made an error in in putting him in prison for this. However, there is one simple fact that his supporters are ignoring. Whilst they try and excuse it and deflect from it, he did break the law. Now, they say all oh, journalists have reported from outside courts. Yes, they have. They tend not to Facebook Live themselves having an argument with the defendants. Or even if it's been in print before, which they had, using their names during that stream, during the trial. Because what people are trying to desperately avoid is that could jeopardise the, the trial and everything against the, the paedophile filth that were up in front of the beak at that time. It could have jeopardised it. It could have caused a miscarriage. It, it just... Bad shit. You know, these guys were going to get done for it. He didn't expose them. He caused a problem. You know, he, he caused a problem. And it was a stupid thing to do. And he knew he shouldn't be doing it, okay? But he did it. Um, he's already done a little bit of time in Nick, came out, weighed, you know, lost a load of weight, couldn't eat the food, etc, 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 and had his telly taken off him, which I'm, uh, should be terrible. Um, but it's interesting how he's playing it now, because obviously he did that very emotional plea. <laughs> very emotional plea to Donald Trump. Um... To give him a, to grant him asylum uh, in in the U.S. Very emotional. Um, don't know what sort of great move that was, considering all the things many of his supporters have to say about asylum seekers, and also given that he frequently used to say, you know, if you don't won't live by our laws, get out. Our laws. It's no good saying no one, no journalist had been in prison since the forties. I think we are stretching things to call Tommy a journalist. I think an activist would be reasonable. I think journalist is stretching it a little bit far in general. Um, but yeah, there we go. Convicted of journalism. And of course, that's that's not the case at all. He wasn't convicted of journalism. He was convicted of contempt of court and other things like that that are actual laws. But I did say before that I don't think imprisoning him is a good idea, and I genuinely, genuinely don't. Farley's just said there, cat was out of the bag, you know, nailed the first one. It, it was reported on before the restrictions came in, but whilst there is the trial ongoing that has restrictions, you just got to... because they're trying to put them away. They're not trying to let them off. They're actively trying to convict them, put them in prison at that point, in the, the press... If there's a gagging order, I have to just pull back a bit. And then as soon as the sentencing has happened, it's usually open season on the the, the, the guilty parties, at the very least, uh, providing they are adults. Now, Tommy did break the law. Um, that does come with a certain tariff to remember. He has a, a habit of breaking the law. However, I don't think putting him in prison is a very good idea. 
not simply because I do believe his, his, his life is in danger in that, but then again, so many people who break the law. Can't do much about that. But this just gives so much more ammo to his followers. I mean, straight away, there's so many things they can pull out to show hypocrisy and show that he's being victimised and that he's been getting, given special treatment. I mean, straight away, I know, and I'm sure it has been, I'm sure this is an original thought, they'll be posting things like this, um, which was, I think it was from 2014. Yeah, there we go, 19th of March, 2014. Quran teacher who abused girl is spared jail to help his family because his wife didn't speak English. Um, now, he didn't... Um, you know, have sex with an underage girl. As far as I know, he repeatedly rubbed the 11-year-old girl's leg and reached underneath her head headscarf to touch her chest. That's got to be suitable for prison, right? Doesn't matter whether your wife speaks English. You should be a nick for that. But they said he's not, he's not a danger to, uh, to girls. Uh, he even said he just favoured her and believed the touching was appropriate to reassure her. Because that's the way you should reassure 11 year old girls. So this guy was laughing. And you'll find more and more and more. And these will all be used. All be used by Tommy Sports to show he's being singled out. Which will further empower you know, the, the movement. Further embolden people. And there was Tommy's call to arms video. You know the one that started off with I'm in prison now. And he said you must fight this by whatever means. This isn't going anywhere good. Uh, I think you'd have been far better off to stick an ankle tag on Tommy for 19 weeks, make him stay in his house, and just say, you know, and nobody else, 19 weeks. That's all. You know, because they, 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 they throw out social media bans to all sorts of people. I think that would have been far more effective. I just think it's totally counterproductive. Now, people online are cheering. Obviously, you know, there's people like, well, he's a Nazi. I mean, every time one of those leftist bellends calls someone a Nazi just because, you know, they've got a problem about grooming gangs and things, all all they're doing is, is creating an enemy that might not have been one previously. You know, the more you, you call anyone with any concerns about anything or even anyone that fucking voted for Brexit a Nazi... You're creating the problem yourself, which probably suits the sort of more SJW types because they need an enemy, no matter what, um, especially the ones that wear balaclavas and throw piss on people. <laughs> They've just given them free reign. Now he's going to come out of prison, can be more popular than ever, get more money than ever, be more vocal than ever. And nothing's been fixed, so it's, it's, a, it's a pyrrhic victory for those who uh, bang on about, yeah, he's been sent down, Tommy Robbins or Stephen Yax, I don't know, whatever the fuck they call him. Yeah, he's been sent down, good, but really pleased about that. I saw one guy who, in his profile, was all about caring and, you know, being a decent human being and all this, and FBPE and all this business, saying he hoped he got raped in prison. Nothing, nothing says you're a caring individual than wishing rape on somebody but i guess it's all right to do it if you don't like them or they're a nazi <laughs> so yeah there, there we go that's that's what's happening with tommy robinson let me know what you think about it do you think he should have been banged up or do you think it's right he was he, you know, you should he have been allowed to roam free? Should there have been restrictions on his freedom of movement? A nice little uh, ankle Rolex, you know, the type of thing. What do you think Tommy should have got? But the one thing that is bullshit is convicted of journalism. That's absolute horse shit of the highest order. I'm not, I'm not wearing that for a fucking second. 